Hello everyone and welcome to Colors Fades Quick and Dirty Modding Skyrim Special Edition Tutorial. I'm your host, Colors Fade. I want to run this through for a friend of mine on the Facebook group Friendly Gaming Network, give you the really quick rundown of how to mod Skyrim Special Edition with SKSE64 and handling mods and launching the game properly. So here we go. This is Nexus Mod Manager. You want to install this. You can get that from this link. I'll put these links in the description. That's the first thing you want to have. The second thing you want to have is Loot, the Load Order Optimization Tool. Again, I will put this link in the description. You want to have that and I'll show you how we're going to use it. And then the Skyrim Special Edition Script Extender. If you go to skscsilverlock.org, you do not want this top line where it says install via Steam and installer and blah blah blah. That's for the old version of Skyrim. And you don't want the third line down where it says the VR build. You do not want that unless you're actually playing with the VR version of Skyrim. What you want is this second line. Current special edition build 2.07 you want that zip archive take that download it we have it downloaded over here under my downloads directory on my Skyrim mods for June of 2008 I have an SKSC 64 directory here installing this is a snap you have your Skyrim special edition directory here which is typically gonna be Steam Steam apps common Skyrim special edition the readme file for Skyrim 64's SKSE is very simple. It says copy the DLL and EXE files to your Skyrim SE folder. The DLLs are this file right here. DLL, EXE, SKSE 64 Steam Loader DLL. Those three files you want to copy directly into this Skyrim Special Edition. And I already have mine installed so I'm not going to bother copying them more. You can see them right here. SKSC 64 underscore 1 underscore 5 underscore 39 DLL. Here's the EXE file and then the 60 SKSC 64 Steam Loader DLL. So those three files get copied into this main directory. The next thing the README file says you want to copy the PEX files from data scripts into data scripts of Skyrim Special Edition. So here's a Skyrim. We're in the main Skyrim directory. We go to data, we go to scripts, and if you're over here in the SKSC directory where it got where it got where you unzipped it, you've got data scripts and all these PEX files need to go over here. I've already done all that, so in there. And that's all you have to do to get Skyrim Special Edition ready to work. The third line here in the README file is for if you create mods. Just ignore that and don't worry about running SKSC SKSC64 loader.exe to launch the game because we're not actually going to use this to launch the game. We're going to run the game through Nexus Mod Manager. So if you have the latest version of Nexus Mod Manager, in the upper left, you would normally have this drop down. It would say Launch Skyrim SE. Click no, because I don't want to launch it yet. But what you really want to launch is SKSE. SKSE is going to launch Skyrim Special Edition on its own. You can only tell Nexus Mod Manager to launch one executable file, so you have to tell it to launch SKSE first in this chain, and then SKSE will launch Skyrim Special Edition. So you change that drop down, and that's what you're going to launch when you click start on this game and when you click this button to start your game. Now hopefully you've installed some mods. You can see I have some 80 some mods here. 90 maybe by now. Um, mods that are grayed out are mods that you have installed but are not active. You'd have to click this checkbox to enable and install it. I don't want to use alternate start live another life right now, but I'm using all the rest of these mods. This right tab where it says mods is just your list of mods that are installed the important part of mods is over on the plugins page this is the order ordering of mods is really important in Skyrim because some mods override other things and if you don't get them in the right order you can really screw up your game and you will have all kinds of bizarre behavior in your game if you don't do it right so this load order here if you wanted to try and figure this out on the on your own it could take you days this is why we use loot the supported tools folder up here. Once you have loot installed, it will be an option here. You can see it's got a whole bunch of different things, but loot is the one we care about. And again, you get loot off of here. Loot github.io, download loot, just install it to the default place where it is. And in Nexus Mod Manager, if you need to, you can configure it. 
mod options, download options, Skyrim special edition. I think there's a there's a place in here where you can actually tell it where loot is, but it may be able to figure it out on its own. It's been a while. I just always have this installed. You want loot? It's the number one thing you're gonna loot, gonna use. Click this to launch loot. That this doesn't launch the game. It doesn't launch Skyrim special edition. It's the first thing you want to do when you think you have all the mods installed that you want to install. You're going to launch loot. It's going to bring up this web page looking interface and it's going to take a look at all of your mods and their various prerequisites and the things they're missing and it's going to check the load order for you. So here's what we do. Typically what I do is take Nexus Mod Manager and put it on half the window and I put loot on the other half. And loot's taking a second to fire up here. It usually doesn't take this long for me. But there it is. It's checking all of my mods. So it's going to look through all of this stuff and it's going to tell you if any of your mods are out of place or if they're missing something like this is missing cutting room floor ESP but this actually works. And if any of these are not in the right order you'll get a, a red warning here that will say it's missing something or whatever. But the point is you want these all in the order that loot says after you click this button up here. This little stair step button and I'm missing the cutting room floor ESP for some stuff. Oh, and this plugin requires alternate start better live another life. So I got my load order is kind of out of whack. I got a couple things missing. But the thing is, what I found with Nexus Mod Manager is once you click the apply button and tell it to apply this order to Nexus Mod Manager, it doesn't actually work. So you, what you have to do is go through here line by line and say, what does SKSEC say I need for Skyrim update, Dawn Guard? Those are all those things up here. Skyrim update, Dawn Guard, Hearthfires, Dragonborn. Then the first thing, the first real mod that I have is Lanterns of Skyrim. And then the unofficial patch, you can see it's right there. And then Campfire, ESM. And then General Store is ESM. So you want to go through here and you want to make sure that this list of plugins matches the list that Loot says you're supposed to have. And when that's good, then you're ready to fire up Skyrim. So use loot, always check your mod order list, make sure you're not missing anything you're supposed to. Like right now, I actually am missing a couple of things. Loot you saw had some red warnings, but I already know that it works. At this point in time, you're ready to play Skyrim. You can just hit launch SKSE and play the game. And you're going to know that SKSE is working if you install um, a very specific mod if you install the Sky UI because the Sky UI requires um, Skyrim Special Edition Script Extender in order to work and I have it installed and you're going to get to see what it looks like in a second as soon as the game fires up if it fires up correctly oh and I think I have my Skyrim right now set to a, a windowed mode and that's why it looks like this I've been doing a bunch of experimenting with uh, different resolutions and things to check frame rates, so that's why mine is not going full screen right now and whacking out. But you can see it's loading and it's loading a bunch of different. It's loading on all my mods. The reason this startup time takes long is because I have about 90 mods, and Nexus Mod Manager has to make sure they're all loaded. Skyrim Special Edition has different kind. It has its own built-in mods button down here. Those are mods on Bethesda's website. Forget about it. Just leave this mod button alone. Leave the creation button alone. And own, And my recommendation would be just use the Nexus website and Nexus Mod Manager for getting new mods. Now, if I hit continue for my last save, it's going to give me a warning here because I'm, I pulled a mod out. Yeah, it's missing cutting room floor and a couple other things. And I need to reinstall cutting room floor. And I'll actually show you that real quick at the end of this video. I'm approaching nine minutes, and I was hoping to get this all done in under ten minutes. Like I said, I wanted this just to be quick and dirty. If you need to re-see something over, just go back to roll the video back, play it slower, whatever. But I wanted this to be quick and dirty so you can see that this is not an overly complicated process for modding of Skyrim. And I also am not running um, Skyrim on any kind of Uber machine. This is actually my lap, my gaming laptop, which is not a great gaming laptop. And so that's why all these load screens are, are slow in addition to having tons of mods. Um, I don't have an awesome Skyrim rig like so many people do, and that will change soon. Because... <laughs> 
I really want to play it. Wearable Lanterns will give you an error. It's totally okay. And there it is. It's getting ready. So you can see if I go tab, uh, let's see, inventory. Let's see, items. And so this is what the menu looks like for Sky UI. And you can see the icons are different and the layout's completely different and the tabs are different. And that's how you know SKSE is working. It's totally fine. And there's also, um, oh, let's see. There's also the Nexus Mod Manager. Oh, I know what I need to do. System, and if I go here, I can go to mods and mod configuration. Again, mods. This button. This button is for Bethesda's website to click mods, and it takes a long time to load it. And don't press it. Mod configuration is what you're going to get with SKSC and the various mods you've installed. If they have an MCM menu, it's going to be here. You're going to click on this, so you can see all my various mods like Holidays, A Matter of Time, Better Vampires, Campfire, Diverse Dragons Collection, Frostfall. I need all of these. These are your menus that you get when you install a mod. So I can go to Predator Vision and I can say, hey, use all that set. This is how I want Predator Vision to be set up. And I can go to Sky UI and tell it how I want that set up. So all these things are really awesome. So there's your MC. So don't get confused. Don't click on mods. Click on this mod configuration. That'll can. Not every mod is going to have a mod configuration MCM menu. Sometimes a lot of mods, especially texture mods and armor mods and things like that, they're just they're plug and play. You install them and there's no menu. But you can see I have several mods here that do require it, that allow you to configure them, including immersive armors, frostfall. And by the way, I highly recommend every single mod you see here. They're all awesome. All right, one more thing I wanted to do system and get out of here. I want to show you about updating a mod. I had just found out when I was looking at my mod list here that um, cutting room floor right here it says there's a new vo new version on Nexus Mod Manager. So, so if you click this it'll go to Nexus Mod Manager in your default browser and you can see right here the latest version is 3.07. If I click Nexus Mod Manager Install and click Download, it'll start downloading it for me in Nexus Mod Manager. And so here's the status. And right now it's saying it's paused. Now it's downloading. So cutting room floor. So what you want to do is check these periodically. This will tell you if you have the most recent version of whatever mod it is. Obviously not every mod, the mod authors figure out how to do their versions correctly, but a lot of them do. Once it's complete, you can see I have cutting room floor right here. I'm going to take the old one and I'm going to remove it from all profiles. This is not going to actually uninstall it, it's just going to deactivate it. And then I'm going to install the latest version of cutting room floor. Sometimes when you're installing one of these mods and you click the green checkbox, a big huge installation menu will come up that will give you additional options for instance um, better vampires and a few others they'll let you customize some additional things as you're performing an install and then you're ready to go and after you do an install like that you want to again check loot and then make sure your load order via plugins is correct and then you're ready to roll so I hope that helps you out and if you have any questions about modding you can always ping me directly I'm happy to help anybody modding it. Skyrim is one of the best games ever. And I will catch you next time. Subscribe to my channel if you like the content. I'm always playing games. Thanks for watching.